suppose if you want to directly communicate here you can see we don't know which one will be like client and which one will be server so how to build up our client server paradigm in the same diagram you can see suppose one will be server another things will be your clients so how you are going to communicate and how you are what is the job of your client and server so the server is nothing but it will be always on host okay the server always it will be a host and it will have the permanent ip address that you remember server will have the permanent ip address and uh, what it will do it will be in the data centers and uh, suppose if you are sending any message i'll give you one very good example just think about the college so who is the uh, let's take it as blindly don't think of any of the system or something like that no computers no laptop so now if you will see our college if you have any problem so where you are going the first you will go to the teacher from teacher the problem will go to the hod from the hod the problem will go to the principal now what will happen the solution how it will come the solution path also from the principal will come to the hod from hod it will come to the staffs right so now who is dealing with the problems the principal is dealing with the problem so now who is the server principal will be the server so the principal's address will be same but there will be n number of hod's and there will be n number of staffs how you are going to communicate with that n number of hod's are going to the same address wherever the server is present it means the principal's room from there the solution will come so that room is nothing but your data center so from that data center you can, he will send all the message he will pass the message which will be reaching to all the centers again which one is the next data center the hod room so the server will be your principal's room which is or uh, which is a uh, data center which is get going to send all the message and who is going to receive the hod's from the hod's it will go and spread with the staffs then it will reach with the students so the students will be the clients the communication channels will be your hod and staff i hope you have understood this example in the same way in our whole network the global the servers will be there that is the, your networking where the global uh, network will be there so here the server always it will act as your host and it will have the permanent address so here if this is my server and if i want to con contact in between this network then it will have one permanent address the data center will be here only i'm not going to touch with any of the data center so now what is the work of your clients the clients has to contact or communicate with the server so whenever the clients wants to send any kind of message if the students wants to send any kind of message only the thing is that they have to uh, go through the channels so here who all are the channels the, suppose this is the student this is a principal they want to communicate but directly they cannot communicate they have to go to the uh, local isp then global isp which will be acting by your staff or by your hods that is the channels but the communication will be in between your uh, principal and student so now here principal is the server student is your clients so now may be intermittently connected may have the dynamic ip address how if the server is having the permanent ip address the client will have the dynamic ip address how the dynamic ip address today suppose the usn number 122 has some problem so the 122 is the ip address of that student tomorrow 123 is having the problem who wants to communicate with the server like principal so 123 will be the client will be the ip address of that student so different so in this way the dynamic ip address will vary from one student to another student here we have considered all the student as your clients there will be n number of clients who is going to directly communicate with your uh, principal like your server the next point do not communicate directly with each other yes we cannot communicate the path is different the message will pass from your student to principal that is right but it has to follow with the channels what is the channel through your staff through your hod it has to 
uh, it has to go to it has to reach to your uh, server or principal so in this way here in this network also directly you cannot communicate but we know that you want to pass the message from here to here client to server but it has to follow some of the paths so the what are the examples how we are going to send the message and all it is going to follow the http uh, it is going to follow the http imap and ftp in this way we are going to communicate with our client to server so i hope you have understood now next see what is the meaning of your peer to peer architecture client server architecture we understood now let's see what is the meaning of your peer to peer architecture in this peer to peer architecture no always on server it is not mandatory that you should have the server that is a first thing so what is the i will give you same example again suppose 122 student is having some problem he don't want to go to principal what he will do he can communicate with 123 and can solve the problem so what they have done they have communicated with each other to send the message from one place to another place in that time that is known as your peer to peer architecture here there is no role of your server server is not going to act an arbitrary end systems directly can communicate arbitrary in the sense this uh, this is one you can see my diagram here one system one mobile phone is there who is going to connect with directly with this laptop so this is known as your peer to peer from here to here so at a time you can communicate with anyone without the help of your server so that is known as your peer to peer architecture the next thing will be your this peers request the service from other peers now he wants to request first directly he cannot jump and take the access from this right first he has to request he has to send the request that i want to communicate then he has to send the acknowledgement back that okay we can communicate we can transmit the files or we can transmit the message or we can transmit the packages it depends how you are going to communicate so these things has to uh, be performed by using your request service and response service when we are sending any kind of request that is known as your request service and when we are getting the acknowledgement back that is known as our response service so in this way these two system can communicate peer to peer and also here you know that the ip address will get changed always because why it is having because today 122 is communicating with 123 by using peer to peer architecture tomorrow 122 can connect with 130 and can have the uh, exchange the files or communicate with any kind of message so always these things will get changed tomorrow 123 also can go somewhere and can communicate so as these things are going in this way this is a very complex management here the files will move the message will move from one place to another place very rapidly so what will happen in this is here we will get very complex architecture to follow up so this is uh, an only one way it is going to helpful for you because it is going to send you the files very fast if you want to communicate from my mobile to your mobile if i am sending whatsapp message any photos any videos any files these all are things your peer to peer architecture because i am going to send within the network from one place to another place so no one will act as your server here and my ip address also can change because today it is not mandatory that only i will send you the message i can send to n number of people the same message so that is known as your peer to peer file sharing before going to the next i uh, i hope that it has been cleared with all these things 